every spring, millions of herring return to the shores of eastern Vancouver Island and nearby islands to lay their eggs. The herring are spawning. And an astonishing assembly of wildlife congregates to feast on the herring and their eggs. For the past two years, I've come to witness the herring spawn. And both times, I found myself in the middle of a feeding frenzy of sea lions, eagles, gulls, and marine birds. But though thousands of herring filled the ocean around me, the milky fog of herring sperm surrounding the spawn hid them all. While I saw sea lions and eagles by the hundreds and marine birds by the thousands, I barely saw a herring. The main character in this remarkable drama, the herring, were hidden the whole time within a milky turquoise ocean. So this year, I am back with great intention. Amid all the chaos, I want to see the herring as they spawn. It's early March and I'm just arriving on Hornby Island. I've got a week and I'm hoping to catch the herring spawn here. Every year it's a guessing game. When will the spawn start? Where will they spawn? The spawn can happen anywhere along eastern Vancouver Island between Comox and Nanaimo, a distance of over 100 kilometers. But I've come to Hornby Island because there's a good chance that some of that herring spawn will happen right here along its shores or those of nearby Denman Island. My first day, ever hopeful, I paddle the shores of Hornby, looking for life. Government surveys show that there are great masses of herring just offshore. But here, it's all pretty quiet. But it's my luck that the next day, a small wave of herring have come in to spawn along the island's north shore. I arrive to a wild chaos of gulls, sea lions, and seabirds feeding on the herring and the herring eggs. The bay is milky with herring sperm. So I lower my underwater camera into the clearer water at the edge of the spawn area. But the thousands of herring in the bay remain hidden from me in the milky fog. And so it goes the following day. I find another small spawn, its milky turquoise colors in strong contrast to the dark blue ocean waters around it. I spend the day surrounded by gulls, sea lions, eagles and seals feeding on herring. But though I search the clear waters at the edge of the spawn, hoping to catch some herring going into or coming out of the fog, I have no luck. My fifth day dawns bright and once again I'm on the hunt. I arrive at the north shore and, good news, a small spawn is underway off to the west. I can see a sharp edge between the turquoise water of the spawn and the clear ocean waters. So I head that way. Ten minutes later I get there and take a look. I've got my camera on a long pole and lower it into the clear water just beside the milky spawn. Oh my, oh, herring! They stream by, heading into the spawn area. The herring are just dazzling. So sleek, so silver-sided, so brilliant in the light. I just watch and marvel. Like salmon, herring migrate to their birthplace to spawn. But unlike salmon who die shortly after spawning, herring return to their summer feeding grounds offshore Vancouver Island in the open Pacific. They can return here to spawn as many as seven or eight times over their lifetime. These herring returned to the Salish Sea last fall from the open Pacific offshore of Vancouver Island and have spent the winter amid the Gulf Islands. Over the past few weeks, these herring have congregated in nearby deep waters, waiting. And now, they're moving ashore in great waves, triggered by a mysterious urge to spawn. But as I watch, the current of fish changes. The steady one-way flow of herring into the spawn area breaks down, with fish now milling about in all directions. The herring are starting to spawn. 
many of the fish have moved down and are swimming right within the rockweed. And as all this is happening, the fish are packing together tighter and tighter. I notice little white strings floating around in the water. I've read that male herring release ribbons of solid sperm that then break down into fine particles. And that, that's what I'm seeing. So, I'm watching the beginning of the spawn. <laughs> oh, incredibly exciting. So I reposition my camera. This time, I'm really lucky. I get it right down in among the herring. <laughs> and there's just a furious energy, herring nosing their way in every direction through the rockweed. I've read too that telling males and females apart is really difficult. Both sexes look and behave similarly during spawning. Both belly down into the rockweed, spreading either sperm or sticky eggs from their stomach vent. And herring males and females don't pair up. Instead, they all congregate and then all begin to release sperm and eggs. The eggs of a female are fertilized by the sperm of many males. And then I watch a male slide over some rockweed and leave behind a fluttering litter of white strings. Caught the act! And then, looking really closely, I can see the swollen vent of the herring release the sperm ribbon. So, where are the eggs? I'd expect to see them on the rockweed leaves. Just yesterday, I saw rockweed coated with herring eggs as I walked a low tide shore. Whoa, what's that? I see a few white colored eggs scattered on green rockweed leaves. Maybe the egg laying is just starting. Maybe the females don't start to lay the eggs until the sperm cloud gets really thick. But the fog of sperm is enveloping everything and I'm losing sight of the details. So I shift my gaze to the surface. The spawn fog has rolled in, fills the water that I stand in and has spread some 10 meters west along the shore. Spawning herring dance around my feet. The whole thing feels surreal. I just never imagined I would be so immersed in herring. I just stand and take it all in. I look east along the milky shores and catch sight of an explosion of herring. Perhaps a fish or seal has chased them ashore. I head over and put one back in the ocean. Nearby, more herring are trying to spawn on a very shallow shelf. A herring with a strikingly bright green back is stranded. So I get it back in the ocean as well. I breathe in and look around. This has been so amazing. I feel I now have at least a glimmer of what's going on below those beautiful white and turquoise waters. The dance of the herring is underway. Thankfully, the commercial fishery has been elsewhere today, somewhere along the shores of Vancouver Island. The herring here have been able to spawn as they have since time immemorial. I head out for a paddle later that afternoon as the sun gets low. A great sense of gratitude washes over me. I know that I've been gifted something rare. I have witnessed the ancient herring dance. It's a life-giving dance, but a largely hidden dance that is the vital core of this great convergence of wild living that we call the herring spawn. The herring having spawned head back now to their feeding grounds in the open Pacific, offshore of Vancouver Island. In a few weeks, tiny herring will hatch and fill these waters, and the cycle of life goes on.